Here's the question. I hear quite frequently from music lovers and professional musicians. What did inspire me to become involved in the revival of the violoncello da Spalla? And what does it feel like to be involved in the revival of this instrument as a part of our musical culture? I want to take you on a journey. Imagine now it is 2003, late autumn, and you are in Bilbao, in Spain. And you see me at the hotel, at the hotel lobby, a very elegant, very modern, very nice hotel lobby, with a group of musicians, dear friends of mine, and we are unwinding after a performance that went really well, the beautiful, large concert hall in Bilbao, and the conversation is flowing in Italian, and you hear very soft jazz music pouring through the loudspeakers, and uh, suddenly, through the revolving doors, glass revolving doors of the hotel, you see a couple of musicians trying to enter the hotel and you are there carrying a ton of suitcases and many instrument um, cases. And well, they happen to be the conductor of the orchestra and his wife. They join me with a group of other musicians for a round of drinks. And this is when the conductor, suddenly and completely out of the blue, is asking, Jimmy, what do you think? Did such instrument, violoncello da Spalla, ever existed? And I was really surprised to hear this question. So I needed a few minutes to reflect, and then I said, yes, this instrument apparently did exist because it is shaped like a very, very large viola, but uh, due to the double depth, it is obviously designed to sound an octave below the modern viola. So I said, yes, this instrument did exist. And then the conductor asked me, would you be interested in crafting this instrument for me? Put yourself into this situation. How would you feel? So, in this split second, I was taken on this journey in time and space, and I found myself in Nalchik, in Caucasus, at a workshop of my very first instrument-making mentor, a luthier whose name was Vladimir, and it is a 1980. 1970, 1980, it is 1980, I was 11 years of age. And imagine this man, a little bit round, I'm not saying overweight, but round, with a very thick brown leather apron, with enormously thick eyeglasses sitting on his prominent mittened, meaty nose, with lenses in his eyeglasses, so thick that they act as magnifying glasses for his eyes, expression of wisdom and patience and love. And I don't know what I was under spell or, or what, instead of asking him, please, would you fix my violin so that it sounds better, I asked him to become my teacher and teach me how to make instruments. And you might be wondering, so what was this man? Well, he was a luthier who dedicated his life to bringing back to life a lost cultural tradition in that part of Russia, South Russia, in Caucasus. And in fact, in the following five years, he created enough instruments that were completely lost and nobody knew anything about those instruments. They were er erased from life. He created enough of those instruments to establish two orchestras of folkloric music. And when it is 1984, I'm 15, one of these orchestras was heard for the very first time by the people of the Republic. There was this sensation of enormous pride and happiness. People were so proud. Wow, we have our own culture. We have our own identity. We belong in this culture. And to me, as a 15 years young boy, this was so powerful that I felt, oh my goodness, if a mere craftsman can bring such profound sense of connection and unity and happiness to people, I want to be an instrument maker. And in that split second, when the conductor asked me, would you be interested in making this instrument for me. In my imagination, I was taken into this time travel. And the next thing I told him, 
let me think about this. I'm interested. <laughs> you might be wondering why I didn't say, yes, of course, this is the thing I was dreaming about all my life. No. I didn't say, yes, of course, here's the bill. Because I, I did realize what an immense amount of work it takes. So I needed time to talk to a very dear friend of mine, world leading expert on historical strings, Mimo Pirufo of Acrula Corde, and all Baroque players, of course, know this superhero of early music. And that very night I talked to him and he said, Dimitri, this is going to be a major challenge, but I do have some wonderful ideas. I think it will work, so go ahead and tell the conductor we will make this instrument for him. And the road to the victory and success was not quite straightforward. There was much more work than I expected, but that's a story. This is material for another video, but this is how I got involved and this is why I got involved in the reconstruction of this instrument. Now you might be wondering, well, is this me who brought this instrument back to life? Well, no, there are so many people involved and it all begins with my old master when I was just 11. This man who brought not just one instrument, but whole musical culture back to life and made so many people belong together in that culture. And I think that is what is important about the rebirth of Violoncello da Spalla. I hope you found some value in this story. If you did, do comment below this video. Feel free to subscribe to my channel wherever you happen to follow me, be it on LinkedIn or YouTube or Instagram or on my blog. If you have any questions, comment below this video. Ask me anything you want. I'm here to help. And by the way, you might be wondering who am I anyway and why you should be listening. My name is Dimitri. I'm the author of the book on Da Spalla, how violinists can find a unique voice and open new career opportunities in 14 days. And if you are interested in the book, I will leave a link below this video. See you in the next video.